on Divorce Court today. When they first met, she says he lied about everything, but she married him anyway. Now, Entree and Davies have spent a decade together, have three children, and want to call it quits. She says he's a womanizer and a gamer. He says she's disrespectful and belittling. Andre McDaniel and Davies McDaniel have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in divorce court starts now. Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel, um, you're fighting over a van because you yeah. finally decided to get a divorce after three years of separation. I want to know how you made it as long as you did. <laughs> uh, you say, Ms. McDaniel, that from the day you met him, he did nothing but lie to you. Yes, Judge. Tell me, give me some examples of the things that he told you that you ultimately found were not true. Well, from day one, he's done nothing but lie. I mean, mind you, even in the dating stage, he told me he had a car. Not only did he not have a car, this car was in the shop, and he didn't even have a license to drive a car. He lied about his relationship status. He told me that he was single. And, but he was living with someone, mind you, an older woman who he tends to always gravitate towards someone who can take care of him. I mean, she had kids as old as him. Um, wow. And she, she, and then they wind up even having a baby together. Like, he was 20-something and she was, like, almost 50 years old. He lied about his education. I was in school in New Orleans at the time. And, you know, I'm in college. I'm in the university. He hadn't even gotten his GED yet. Well, what did he say? He, he said he had graduated from high school or he said he was he college? He told me he graduated from high school, but mm -hmm. it he came got his GED. He, he had not gotten it. Oh, he had not gotten no, his GED. He had not. Did you learn about these lies prior to marrying the man? Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> 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 What made you think that a man who tells as many and the magnitude of the lies he told, why would you marry him? Judge, I, before we met, I was like on this spiritual awakening. You know, I'm in college, so you know, you experience all kind of things. I was celibate. You know, I was just being me and just saying that love is love and I love everybody and what it doesn't matter. What were you matter. studying in college? I was in pharmacy school. You were in pharmacy school? Yes. So you were on a spiritual awakening. Yes. I was and you were, you were loving life yes. and knowledge and Working education. Working out and exercising and eating good, just feeling good about everything. Which makes that all the more confounding <laughs> that you would marry a guy who lies to you about everything. Now, I did say I was celibate, so, you know, maybe he gave me that attention. He might have put it on me, and it, it just blew my mind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you, uh, uh, Mr. McDaniels. Good for you. Uh, let me let me talk to you for a moment, since since we've we've gone in your direction here. Right, thank you, Yon. Uh, is she accurate about all of those lies you told, or is that not really what happened? Um, some of them are, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, when I met her, I was working. Right. You know, it wasn't like I was just a nobody. You know, I was working. Where um, were you working at? I was working at. I was. That's the last question you get to ask in here, Miss Daniels, yes, Mr. Daniels. I was working at McDonald's. I mean, it was a piece of job. Hey, it's a job. Right. There's nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. Exactly. It's better than not working. Don't rag on a man who has a job. If he's got a job, he's got a job, and it's all good. So at the time, you know, I, I did tell her lies because I felt like I didn't want her to be all in my space, you know, knowing who I really was. But um, at Why the time, would you not want her to know who you really were? Well, because I grew up, you know, without my father. Um, my mama was on drugs. So my life was kind of, I, I did me. You know, I, I pretty much did me, and I you had to... rose rose up and beyond those things that you were born exactly. into. Can, can, can I give you some advice? Yes. Though? <laughs> yes. The only thing better than who you are is the fact that you could have been so much less. If you tell the whole story, people are even more enamored of you. You right. don't have to hide right. a bad past because right. having a bad past and being a great person, you know what I mean. Thank so you. So you yeah. cool for that? Right. Thank I'm you, gonna yeah. work with you for that. Thank you. What was her? What was your major problem with her? Um, at the time, well, she she, she was lazy. 
You know, um, oh, that's the uh, thing that you don't see. Oh, you know, uh, always late, um, never on time. I mean, as you saw, even when we stepped up, she was still running her mouth. You know, so um, oh, always late. You know, and at the time, like, I didn't really see it until after years of being married and then you separate, you know, mm -hmm. then you see all the ugly stuff that you didn't see when you was in love, you know, but when you got out of love, you know, then you begin to see all the uh, uh, laziness that right. she has. I also understand that you had, had a bit of trouble with her family. Yes. They came to New Orleans for her graduation. Um, they was all in a hotel room, and they figured they was going to give me the third degree, you know, because at the time, I didn't finish school, you know, but what she didn't tell you, I got my GED. Now? Um, Mrs. De McDaniel? Years. Yes, ma'am. I call it the caterpillar effect, Your Honor. You know, she, she only saw the caterpillar, but what she didn't know that the caterpillar turned into the butterfly. Now, I, and, and, and I get that, I, I, but I still want to talk about the family. What was her family doing? Um, that caused you concern. You know, they figured that she should have married a doctor, or a lawyer, or somebody, you know, that had an education or that was doing better than I was. Mm -hmm. You know, and plus what she hadn't well, told them. They, were they a constant irritant? Did they do something or it's just... I mean, because a lot of in-laws have bad opinions about the people that their child marries. They didn't even know me, Your Honor. Uh -huh. it, it, was, it was things that she had told them. So what, so what did they do? Was it just a one-time thing? What happened? Oh, yeah. They, they, they packed me in a hotel room, and they just took shots, Your Honor. They so they loaded, grilled you? They loaded up the gun, and they just shot every which way. I, I, was, I was ducking from north, south, east, and west. <laughs> <laughs> did, she, did you ever see her family again, or was that the end of it? Yes. Uh, like, the next day they had came to the uh, apartment that we was living in, you know, I still welcome them because, you know, I have morals, you know, and mm -hmm. respect. But uh, like I told her, that's her family, so she had to deal with them. Did, did you put the family in check? Not exactly. Once you married him? Why not? I mean, yeah, once we got married, yes, I was always defending him all the time. He didn't think I did, but I was always defending him. And they no, got she sick didn't, of Your Honor. Next, family troubles, money troubles, and trouble with other women. Are all three tearing this marriage apart? Divorce isn't easy. If you need help with your breakup, call toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court. Real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. Now, has your family been all in it? I mean, you say you've defended them since you've been married, but did... Were they causing trouble? There was a little trouble. Um, there was always something being said or even things that have been done. You know, they would even, like, pit my kids, our kids against him. You know, the kids notice, well, he why pit isn't... Your, they pit your kids against him? Yeah, because the kids would notice that, you know, he wasn't ever invited to anyone's house or never came around, and so that caused them to ask questions. And, you know, I even had fallen out with some of my relatives because I was being faithful and devoted to him and to our cause. So, yeah, there Is was that true? I mean... Yeah, I know what I forgot to tell you was that her family tried to pay me to leave her alone. <laughs> How much? Uh, it, it, it was like some hundreds of dollars that, that <laughs> they paid. <laughs> They wanted you to go, but not, but, but not a thousand dollars. Right, right. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Now, Ms. Ms. McDaniel, you say that you have concerns about whether or not Mr. McDaniel had cheated on you. Concerns? I know he cheated on me. Well, tell me about that. From day one, one time he went out and kept my car. I had a final at school the next day. It was because he was with a, another woman. That was, you know, my D. Macafella days. You know, that was that was those days. <laughs> your, your, your what? D. Macafella. <laughs> D. Macafella? <laughs> yes, yes, Your Honor. I was. I was, the child. I was. I was. I would know. look at you, Joe, but I know you don't know what that <laughs> no. means. I don't know what that means. What does D. Macafella mean? Um, I was, I was doing me, Your Honor. D no. Mac a fella. Mac a fella. A fella. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I swear I'm gonna start a DC diction the divorce court dictionary and D Macafella's gonna be in it. D Macafella will definitely be in it. How long into the marriage did uh, D Macafella run things? Mm -hmm. We we was we was probably married three years or yeah, something like three years um when that all started. Mm -hmm. When it started or you finished? Well when when you know, throughout the marriage, um, I stepped out because, you know, at times, you know, she was controlling. So at like times, you know, I had to get away or, you know, occupy my mind with uh, some things. How, too. In what manner was she controlling? For instance, I had got my income tax uh, uh, check and I had wanted a flat screen TV. She told me that we couldn't have a flat screen TV. You know, I wanted Internet in in the house. She told me it was more convenient to go to the library. Mm -hmm. Then they have internet at the house, mm -hmm. you know. So she she always wanted to control things. Yeah. Were you economically able to to really afford these things? We could have afforded it, Your Honor. You could have afforded yes, it. Yes. We only had one child at the time. That was it. And we we was living in a, um a apartment that was like five hundred. You know. So how much were you making a month though? I was making maybe about uh, twelve hundred dollars a month. You couldn't afford it. Mm. I'm telling you right now, you couldn't afford it. If you got $500 for rent, right. and you got a kid, you got $700 left over for food, gas, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You don't have oh, that was included. Green. Still, $700 a month for three kid, for three people. You can't afford a flat screen mm. TV. You wanted one, but you couldn't afford it. It was my it. income tax, though, Yana. But you put that in the bank, you, 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 for, you know, if you lose your job or if, right. if, if heaven forbid, the car goes down or the kid gets we sick or you need one. some new shoes, right. that's what that's for. It's not for flat screen TV. I'm going to give a <laughs> seminar on disposable income because don't nobody know what it is. <laughs> when Divorce Court continues, are parenting issues and issues between the parents causing their children pain. Do you think Entre defends Davy strongly enough to her family? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Mr. McDaniels, you say you, have, you had a very important issue with Mrs. McDaniels, which is you felt that she didn't keep the kids clean and neat. Correct. And that, you know, she'd go out looking good and your kids were looking crazy. Correct. So you tell me what she was or was not doing with respect to the children. Um, well, this particular day, Father's Day, you know, I came over to get the kids. Um, the kids' I, our clothes wasn't ironed, you know, uh, their hair wasn't combed, you know, so I, I told her uh, uh, about it, because she know how I am, you know, mm -hmm. and she told me, well, you have a different opinion, of, you know, I look at things different. And as you can see, Your Honor, she's all buttered up. You know, <laughs> she's all buttered up. You know, um, you. I feel that my kids should be... Should be buttered up, too. Exactly. Now, Ms. Daniels, would you, would you send the kids to him looking crazy? Judge, I love my children. And of course not. My children are very well taken care of. I mean, sometimes I will slack. I'm a busy woman. I have to get up and fix them breakfast. He comes over already dressed and think everything's just going to be okay. Well, when you come over, why don't you help and do some of those little things that you want done as opposed to just, you know, coming down on me for it yeah. in front you of You know, you did say they would all, they had rusty knees and elbows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get to, you can get a little lotion, rub that on there. Exactly. You know, and you can, you, finish you, you can knock that rust off really easy. I'm a father, y'all. Uh, you know? I'm a father. I'm not a weekend dad. I'm in our kid's life. She can attest to that. And, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because you said she said something very hurtful to you mm -hmm. about the nature of your fathering. You had asked her, she said, don't you think I'm a good father? And she said that you were simply decent. Decent. What were you talking about that made you ask that question? And why were you so hurt about the decent remark? I was just asking, and when I did ask it, 
You know, she said, I was a decent father. Now, Your Honor, I'm more than adequate. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been there since day one, you know. M Ms. McDaniels, why do you think he's only a decent father? There were, there were a lot of things going on where, you know, he may have been out cheating or out playing video games, not taking that time and investing it into the children the way he should have or investing it into our family. So I might have said decent and I, I might have been a little salty. Were at the you time. a little less than doting as a father? I mean, decent is, you know, I mean, it's not good, it, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad, but were you super involved? Um, PTA? Football, basketball, teaching them the word of God. Taught my son how to play chess. Spending quality time, not not just time, Your Honor, but spending quality time with my kids. He sounded a little pretty good over here. <laughs> You know, but do you think that womanizing and staying out all night and playing video games and not working is a good example to set for your young sons? Here's what, I, mean, I, here's what I will say to you, Mr. McDaniels. You know, fathering is not just about spending quality time with their children. When you have two parents and one parent is kicking the other parent in the gut, you know, running around on your wife kicks her in the gut. Mm -hmm. You are destabilizing 50% of their foundation. And, and that causes them great difficulty and yes. causes them great harm. So I believe that she's assessing that entire picture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, but that goes both ways. Like, both parents have, in, you know, instilled into our kids. So, right. yes. No, I, I get right. that. I get right. that. But you understood what I said about, exactly. about kicking the other door. The, There's a four-legged table. Mm -hmm. You kicking two, two. Of the, two of the legs out. That destabilizes the table. We cripple. No right. matter, yeah, no matter how many books and food and all you got mm -hmm. on top of the table, you destabilize. That's all I'm trying to say. Right, I got you. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mrs. McDaniels, I understand why things ended. I I don't think you're a bad guy, Mr. McDaniels. I. I I thought you were a bad guy when I when I read your petition, but I don't. I, I think you're a guy that is in progress. You are in growth. The facade is wonderful. Mm. The heart has to be there. And then the next time you get a woman, I don't know if you got one now or not. Mm. Don't tell me. <laughs> don't say I do if you if you really don't. I loved her though, Yana, when I married her. I understand that. You know? I, I I believe you. I believe you, Ms. McDonald. What? Why don't you tell me why you believe that that car should remain in your possession? Your Honor, I held a job down for seven years, mm -hmm. paying all the bills, rent, car insurance, gas. And mind you, both of our names is on the title, but I believe that I should keep the van. It, we took out an $18,000 loan, and I say I would pay, I paid about 97% of that. Wow. So why shouldn't it be mine? Okay. Mr. McDaniels, your yes. response to her, her belief that she should have the car. Um, when we purchased the van, like, she wasn't even working. She had just started working when we purchased the van. We have both paid on the van, but my thing is this, Sharana. She already has a, a 2005 car. It's times where I need to, you know, pick up the kids or bring them to baseball practice or uh, football That's practice. That's not my fault or my responsibility. Mrs. McDaniel, let, let, let me ask you this. Is that the only car that you have, or do you have another car? She has another car. You have two cars. The van isn't even working. And yes, I do have one, a car that is working. <laughs> but it should be at my disposal to do whatever I want to do with it. If I want to sell it for 2000 I should be able to do that because I put the most money and invested the most into it. I shouldn't be responsible for him getting That's his children to and from. That's not how it works. Let me tell you how it works. You get married, you combine your thing, whoever made more money, this, that, or the other thing. But you divide those major assets in an equitable fashion. You know, if the van was your only mode of transportation and you run around with the kids, he wouldn't get anywhere near it. But you got a car and it's working. You don't get to keep both of them. Uh, Mr. McDaniel, continue on your growth. Ms. McDaniel, next time you get a guy, don't go for the line, go for the look. <laughs> What's he doing? What's he doing? What, don't listen to what he's saying. Yes, Watch what he's doing. And then and only then, if he's doing the right thing for a long period of time, then and only then do you hook up with him. Judgment in favor of Mr. McDaniels. It is so wonderful. <laughs>
Andre and Davies respect the judge's ruling and are trying to become better role models for their children. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.